tonight we're going to stay on this mindset of the spirit of Antichrist. And so with that, uh, Keith, when we're talking about the spirit of, of Antichrist, what we're talking about, um, you know, as a reminder that that uh, prefix anti means what? Against. Against or instead of. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind, the mindset of the Antichrist or the Antichrist spirit is, A, is going to come against the Father, is going to come against the Son. And B, it's going to present itself against or instead of the Father and the Son. And so you, you keep just keep that in mind as we study this, either tonight, even tonight and next week. So against or instead of. I also want you to kind of look at, begin to look at what's going on in our society with that, with through those lenses. Is this, is this against God or is it promoting instead of God? And when you begin to look at society that way, then you definitely come to understand where John wrote 2,000 years ago, there's a lot of Antichrist in the world right now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of mindset, a lot of action right now that is against God or trying to be instead of God. Uh, one thing that we talked about last week as far as uh, this spirit is in 1 John 2.26. It says, These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. And that's the, that's the part that's been on my mind most this week is the spirit of Antichrist is a seductive spirit. Amen. So what does that say to you when, you when I say that? The spirit of Antichrist is a seductive spirit. What does that mean to you? How do you what how do you explain that, Doc? He draws you into the lust of the flesh, uh, pride of life, the things that make us feel good in this world. Okay. So that that the word that's used there for seduce, it's used thirty nine times in Scripture. I'm not going to tell you all of the how it's used. But 24 times it's, it's translated deceit or deceit. Uh, six times air, five times go astray. So when it says seduce, this is not a positive thing. Uh, my age, I one, one of the books that I remember from school, especially when I was younger, I thought Greek mythology was pretty interesting. And Homer's Iliad, do you guys, anybody remember Homer's Iliad? The sirens, you remember the sirens? And, and they, the, those voices were so seductive, the sailors would drive, would steer their ships into the rocks and kill them all. Well, that's the spirit of Antichrist. And I, you know, I don't, I'm not saying to teach Greek mythology, but using that as an, that's what it's going, it's going to draw you in, in such a powerful way. But the intention is to destroy you. Now, it's going to give an idea that its intention is to empower you. It will give an idea that its intention is to better you. But the intention is deception. That's the spirit. So the, the seduction. Um, anybody remember what, what the Bible, or give me any description of what the Bible says, the spirit, the Spirit of Antichrist is or stands for. First John 2, oh, let me just give you the verse. First John 2, 18. <clears throat> Little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard, the Antichrist shall come even now. There are many Antichrists, whereby we will know it is the last time. So here it says there's many. In uh, other verses that we talked about last week, it says denying the Father, denying the Son. Uh, give me an example of something that you see right now in our society that fits this description. A mindset, a teaching, a practice that goes against the Father, the Son, that is intended, that is presented as it betters you, empowers you, makes you better. Anybody? Everybody afraid to talk? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? The gender issues right now, mm -hmm. sure. G gender issues, homosexuality. Uh, so th this is a, a, a I, well it's not even a joke it's just a statement I made and I don't have an answer to this 
But here's this is the question that I can't figure out. If they say the homosexual homosexual identification represents, and I've heard anywhere from one to three percent of the population. Anybody ever heard that stat? Okay, so here's what I can't understand. How come if homosexuality represents one to three percent of the population, it's on one hundred percent of the television shows that I watch? Uh -huh. I don't understand that. It's written into every script. It's currently written into every movie, it seems like. You know, even if it's just something that's added to, it's not a main character plot, it's just something that's added to, it's always there. Mm -hmm. it's, in the it's in the children's cartoons. Yeah. You're seeing it more and more. Disney has grabbed onto it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, because... Because it's being taught as this is normal, okay? And when we when I started this study, I knew we're going to talk about some sensitive things here, okay? And I, and I don't mean this to be offensive. I want this to be eye-opening. Because what it is, is it's the spirit of Antichrist that's already gone out, okay? It is teaching something that is against God. Teaching something that denies God. Okay? So how is something like that against God? Because the message is not saying, hey, there is no God. The message is not saying, hey, there is no Jesus. So how does something like that still fall into a category? Or am I, am I shooting too far? How did, so how do we explain that then? Seductive spirit plays on the issues of the flesh. The answer that I'm going for is this. It's presenting an idea that God does not accept. Right. It's contrary. It presents an idea that God doesn't accept. And when we look at scripture, this is this is what this is what I've learned. This is something that this is just me, okay? How I how I will explain or apply Old Testament principles. Because, see, the world likes to argue that, hey, if you want to throw, for so for example, on this topic with homosexuality, if you want to reference back to the law, then there's a lot of things in the law. you got to take the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So servanthood and, you know, clothes that aren't mixed and crops that aren't planted together, and they go all this tangent, right? And it can kind of be dumbfounding because the logic is there. But the answer is this. God never changes. Right. God never changes. <laughs> and when you look at Scripture and God says something is an abomination, mm -hmm. then it is always an abomination. <laughs> Not because it says so in Deuteronomy, right. but because Deuteronomy revealed an eternal aspect, an eternal truth. Mm -hmm. So you can't disregard something because, well, you know, this doesn't apply anymore. Okay, fine, I don't apply anymore. But it doesn't change what God does. It doesn't change what God accepts. You guys follow that? Okay. So now a message goes out, a seducing spirit goes out and says there's a different way. There's a different application. That goes against. That goes instead of. Therefore, we can say that's part of a spirit of Antichrist. And, and understand when we're talking like in this spirit world, you're, you know, you're kind of, you're, you're really looking at like, uh, like org charts in an organization. You got the president, and then you got the ones under them, and then everybody under them. And so you can have a spirit of Antichrist, but the spirit of Antichrist uses a lot of other spirits and applications and methods. You guys see what I'm saying? So it, it, don't in your mind make this a streamline. What I'm saying is this, 2,000 years ago, the Apostle John wrote and says there's many Antichrists that are in the world. Let me tell you this. 2,000 plus years ago, they weren't dealing with all the issues that we're dealing with now. Mm -hmm. 
But 2,000 years ago, the foundation of what we're dealing with now was being laid. Both in the church and outside the church. So, what we're going to do, got a little sidetracked there, what we're going to do is we're going to stay on this idea of the spirit of Antichrist, how the spirit of Antichrist is working in this world. And let's just go a little bit further. So 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. This is Paul writing to Timothy. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, in the latter times, so that's the times we're in, some shall depart from the faith. Giving heed to what kind of spirits? <laughs> Seducing spirits. That's the same same level of the Greek word from the previous verse. So seducing means what type? Deceptive. It's spirits that are intended to deceive. Mm -hmm. We go it goes on to read and doctrines of devils. So let's just stop right and then it says speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. So let's just stop right there. And let's, uh, let's digest this. So we've got, Paul says in the latter times, there's going to be people that depart from their faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. So right there we have a picture that these deceiving spirits are not just working external. Who are the people that Paul's talking about here? People are going to depart from their faith. These are Christians. Mm -hmm. These are Christians. So number one, I would say to you as a Christian, this is a, this is a warning to us that says, I need to be grounded in the Word. Right. I need to be grounded in the Word because there is not any one of us that is so independent that we would just always on our own get it right. Mm -hmm. Because these individuals, these individuals that are leaving their faith, now follow this, the ones that are leaving their faith, they're not leaving their faith following ghosts. They're leaving their faith following people who are teaching doctrines mm -hmm. that are inspired by, what's it say here, seducing spirits and what? Doctrines. Doctrines of who? The devil. Okay. These are not people that are chasing ghosts. There are going to be people who are, because John says many antichrists have gone out. When John said many antichrists have gone out, was he saying many ghosts have went out and they're haunting people? No. Or was he saying there are many people that have gone out under this spirit? Many people have gone out under this spirit that moves against or instead of God. And now the Apostle Paul says, in the last times, there are going to be some that leave their faith as the result of these individuals that are going out. If you go into the next verse, if you're still kind of questioning it, speaking lies and hypocrisy. So there are going to be people who are lying. Yeah. And their lies are going to deceive people. Mm -hmm. So the lies that they're telling... Not, we don't, I won't go, don't want to go down. I don't want to let's see how can I see this. <laughs> the lies that they're tell, telling are going to be appealing enough to follow. Yeah. Don made reference to what did you say, Don? They appeal to what? The lust, lust of the eyes. There you go. There you go. So if I hear somebody teaching a message, revealing a doctrine, that applies to my nature. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds better than what that preacher's saying. Mm -hmm. This preacher over here says, die to my flesh. This preacher over here says, pacify my flesh. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going with that. I'm going with the latter and not the former. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Yeah. So Paul says in the last days, and so... That's one thing that we that we got to recognize in the church, and and when we go and we look at John's other writings, how many people went out from them? Mm -hmm. 
meaning people that was part of that they were they were preachers themselves they were evangelists themselves and they left the church and then they went out teaching other things so from the church perspective that's one aspect of the spirit of antichrist and right now it is amazing the amount of information that is available mm -hmm. because of the internet. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing that COVID taught us, and there's a joke, there's a joke, I can't exactly remember how it is, something to the effect of every, every in 2020, every preacher became a televangelist mm -hmm. because everybody went online. You know, we had two months, three months. I don't know how it was here. Churches closed down. I don't know if you all closed during that time. We did. Everybody went online. Yep. And so that was the joke. Every pastor in America became a televangelist. <laughs> For two months, three months, we all became televangelists. And, re and right now, uh, a couple years back, Julie and I was on vacation. And it was a Sunday. We was looking for a church close to us close to where we were at. And we were trying to find websites. We couldn't find hardly any websites. But boy, we could find it. We could find any church we wanted on Facebook. Mm -hmm. That's where they're, right? You could probably find whatever you want to hear. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's somebody preaching, yeah. teaching it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's part of this spirit of antichrist it's going out against God it's also going out instead of God the subtle message mm -hmm. is not replacing God but offering a set of values and practices that can be uh, put into place instead of what God says mm -hmm. so when we continue into this um so let's go into verse 3. Let's talk about what they're teaching here. It says, Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So the first thing that we're going to do when we, when we look at Scripture, the first thing we want to do is we want to ask ourselves, what did the person or people reading this think when they read it? And then when we interpret it, we have to begin there. We can make additional applications, but it has to always start with what that person would have understood it to mean. If we can't figure out what they thought it would mean, then we've missed the point. Because Paul was writing to, uh, Paul's writing to Timothy. We get the benefit of reading his letter, but Paul's writing to Timothy. And so the teachers in this era of time, when you go back and you look at commentaries, one of the things that, that uh, seems to be pretty consistent is uh, marriage and food. Two of, the, two of the most basic needs that man has, sex and food. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the teaching is what? Don't marry, mm -hmm. stay away from certain foods. Well, you know that staying away from certain foods was an issue because Paul addressed that uh, certain food, you know, like whether you can eat meat sacrificed to an idol. So you know food consumption is an issue. Why else would food consumption be an issue? For Paul. In that era of time. Well, Paul's teaching to do, he's teaching to what group of people, what ethnicity? Gentiles. But the Jews of that era are still trying to impress upon them their own beliefs. You realize that when the Jews got saved, they didn't start eating pork? Does everybody realize that? The Jews did not say, hey, we're free from the law. Now we can eat whatever we want. It didn't work that way. They still stayed within that practice. Their change, their change was their change of mind. This no longer saves me. Jesus saves me. Hopefully that was their change. But the other thing that we have to recognize is they were, they were just learning their faith too. But we know that they did not just cast aside the law. They didn't just start eating whatever they wanted to. And they didn't just start 
working on, on what we, their Sabbath was a Saturday, not a Sunday. Everybody realized that. They didn't just start working on Saturdays. They still abided by these things. So that would be another issue that Paul is dealing with is, okay, so on the natural, we're always, we're already got a conflict with the law because of food. Another thing was because of marriage. So one thought in this is that the teaching could be don't marry. So that means put yourself under some type of restraint or constraint. So a form of the term is asceticism. I'm going to inflict some type of pain on myself to show God how committed I am to him. And so if you want to really please God, then don't get married. If you want to please God, then don't eat these types of foods. And so that's one aspect that's here from that early, from Paul's letter to Timothy. Any questions on that or anything you'd like to add to that? How do, do does that apply in 2024? Do either of those things apply in 2024? What do you guys think? Honestly, I've never heard preachers today say, quit getting married. Don't get married. I haven't heard that. No, but they also may push. There's no need to get married. There you go. There you go. I'm glad you're thinking outside the box, Don, because that's exactly what I was thinking. This says forbidding to marry, but, you know, 2,000 years later, 2,000 years later, what God's view of marriage is, is no longer being promoted. Right? It's no longer being promoted. Do you know that there was, there, there was, now this says forbidding to marry. Uh, one conflict that happened within the last 20 plus years is, is the rising up that says that marriage should no longer be limited to just a man and a woman. Right? You know what that is? That is a message that says Instead of God's way, mm -hmm. let's make this way. Mm -hmm. And I can say, because we were pastoring through all of that time, we were pastoring up, and I remember teaching our church different, different aspects of this fight. Don made reference to what's in the television shows now. I'll be honest with you, back in, I don't know what year that became legal now. I could have never. I would have. I never did foresee being where we are now mm -hmm. with that law being passed 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Don. In all fairness to the television industry, <coughs> there is a channel where the actors and actresses that have Christian foundations mm -hmm. they started their own it's called Great American Family. Really? Yeah. And they don't have. They don't support. It's something, it's something that we we as Christians here. This is the challenge to us as Christians and, my, and myself. And I'm guilty of not doing this. We need to pray for them mm -hmm. because it now becomes. You know, I said before, these aren't ghosts. Satan will use any platform available to him to promote 
his message. Mm -hmm. That's the spirit of Antichrist. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even have to be embodied. Whether it's television, internet, radio, Satan will use that platform because it's a lie. Uh, John 8, 44, Jesus referred to Satan as the father of lies. Mm -hmm. It's a lie. And so uh, we see, I wanted to point this verse out to you just as an illustration of the spirit of Antichrist. This is in our community. And here's another thing. I don't want time to get away from us. I want to continue going. Daniel 7, 25. Let me show you this. He shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and, and, uh, and the dividing of time. Okay, a lot in that, there's a lot in that verse. Our focus tonight is not on the end time aspect. Our focus tonight is on attitude. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in this verse, in this verse, Understanding that this verse is referring to whom we would we would call the Antichrist, the actual person at the end times. In this purse, in this verse, what will he seek to do? Wear out the saints. He's, he will wear out the saints, so that's number one. He's going to wear out the saints. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever feel, as a Christian, anybody ever feel whipped up on on some of the beliefs, right? Okay, that what is that? That's the spirit of Antichrist. That is the spirit of Antichrist. Mm -hmm. Don't get, don't take it personal to the person that's on the news. They're part of the system. Mm -hmm. They're part of the promotion. You follow, you follow me? Mm -hmm. Pray for that person. What else will this per, What else will the Antichrist try to do? Changing the laws. Change times and laws. Mm -hmm. Change times and laws. So. That means that when we look at the spirit of Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist is going to have this same mindset. This mindset that says, let's change the times, let's change the laws. Let's, you know, we, we looked at a verse last week, he doesn't regard the God of his fathers, mm -hmm. right? Change. You know, they say change is inevitable. Mm -hmm. And some change is good. I don't like change just for the sake of change. And honestly, I'm really not real good with change, but you got to adapt, right? But the Antichrist, when he comes in, his intention will be to change times and laws. Now, from the research that I've done, there's really not necessarily a clear understanding or agreement to exactly what it means. There is, an agree there is somewhat of an agreement that changing times and laws has something to do with religion. Changing religious holidays changing religious functions, changing religious roles, making some types of changes. Uh, when I look at this, I, I could, and I can definitely see that, I'm expanding it when, I, when I'm referring to for our study because, again, I'm looking at what goes on in our society. And all of us are old enough to remember, say, 25 years ago, 30 years ago. Think about some changes. Think about some changes that as Christians were offended by, that have been brought into our society, things that have been accepted, patterns of behavior that have been accepted. Did you ever, how many years ago was it that um, the riots of Minneapolis, oh. they were, you know, right? And I know there was race issues behind, I, I get all of that. But did you ever think that you would see a time where that type of behavior is accepted and excused. Right? Where does that come from? It comes from the power, it comes from the motivation that's behind it. The spirit of Antichrist that says, it's time to change. We're going to make different changes. It's time to change. We're no longer going to accept just what mom and dad did. We're no longer going to accept it just because previous generations accepted it. That is spirit of Antichrist. Now, it will be embodied in a person, and when the person comes into power, there will be changes that we can look at in Scripture as far as religion. You, we won't, don't get too far ahead of it, but what religious change does the Antichrist make? Anybody? 
but religious change is the Antichrist maker. Who has to be worshipped? Him. That's a big change, wouldn't you say? Pretty big change. <laughs> you know how it gets there? These blocks. These pieces put in place. We're changing. I tell you, uh, I, we don't we don't watch any live TV. We watch everything off the apps. So I don't know what's advertised on live TV. And we only have like five shows that we watch, and they're all crime shows. That seem, <laughs> they're all really <laughs> crime shows. It seems like crime, crimes are fire. I like fire shows too. My dad was a fireman. I like fire shows. NBC has a show called Couple to Thruple. Has anybody ever seen an advertisement on that? Donna shocked me too. And I told Julie, I said, I don't know if this is on NBC or if it's on their app, which is Peacock, their Peacock app. It's called Couple to Thruple. Would you like to know what the premise behind Couple to Thruple is, Don? You guys know the... Uh, you, you, guys, you guys know the... Um, like the Bachelor programs, you guys ever see The yeah. Bachelor or whatever those shows are, you know? One one person of one gender is going to fall in love with 20 different people that's there, right? Okay. Don, it just clicked with Don. It's so many couples, 14 couples that come in. And then they have X number of single people. And then they get, in the, and the couples are supposed to invite a third person. Now, I, don't, I, I hope that doesn't offend you. If it does, I'm just going to tell you this with as much love as what the pastor can tell you. This is the world we live in. That's right. And this is the spirit of Antichrist that is saying to people, mm -hmm. here's the change. Mm -hmm. Do you realize over the last, let's say, 10 years, monogamy itself has been called into question? Mm -hmm. Realize that? Monogamy, it's not, it's not just homosexuality and heterosexuality. Monogamy itself. A, long, a true long term, I heard years ago, I heard this. Marriages will one day no longer be till death do us part. But marriages will be a contract between people for a specific amount of time. I promise to be with you for the next 10 years. And that will be the commitment of the marriage. Now that sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I don't think it will. I'd like to be one of the people to say I don't think it ever come to pass. Mm -hmm. But this is what I've realized to do. Instead of shaking your head and walking away and saying that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, you better bow your head and pray because Satan has fired a shot mm -hmm. telling you which way it's going. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I, I think if a person was to say that to themselves, Pastor, that they'd be so naive. It's not that far. And again, instead of shaking your head and saying that's never going to happen, you need to bow your head because the enemy is showing you his plan. Mm -hmm. The enemy is showing you his plan. And while you and I, you know what my son told me the other day? I don't know how many people outside of our church watch this live stream. They probably won't watch it. I don't know. <laughs> you know, my, this is what my son told me the other day. I told him, I said, I am committed to lose, i got to lose some weight. <coughs> so I said, I'm tired. Of this. I said, I've, I've been in good health. All my lab numbers have come back really good. i just got to lose some weight. And I said, you know, I said, we've been married for 36 years. I said, you gain three, four pounds a year. <laughs> it don't sound bad. But when you get close to 40 years, that's really putting on some weight. You know what my loving son told me? Oh, he called me back later that night. And he said, Dad, I've been thinking about what you told me today. About how long it took you to gain all that weight. I said, yeah. He goes, you know what? Dad, it took you 36 years to gain it. But it won't take you that long to lose it. 
I said, that's nice. Mm -hmm. He said, even if it took you 36 months to lose a day, you could start gaining weight at the same rate and you wouldn't live long enough to gain it all back. <laughs> <laughs> that's what my son told me. How's that for encouragement? <laughs> I don't know where I was going now. Before I this. <laughs> so, yeah, what I, I think what I was trying to say is, I'm at the stage of life now, and you all are there to help. You know you're closer to your end than your beginning. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I got 12 and 13 year old grandkids that when they, when they hit their 20s, their 30s, and their 40s, they're going to be coming into a society yeah. that is going to teach gender is fluid. Mm -hmm. Monogamy is a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. You can serve and do what you guys follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Satan, I know he, I, I'm going to tell you something. Satan, ain't he, Satan is not trying to deceive you. He's deceiving your kids, yeah. your grandkids, and your great-grandkids. Yeah. And if all we're going to do is shake our head and say that ain't going to happen, it is happening. Mm -hmm. My daughter, who graduated high school in 2006, I did not know it until after she graduated, but she talked about seeing same-sex kissing in her school. Mm -hmm. That was 2006. Mm -hmm. Hard to believe. That was almost 20 years ago. Yeah. I can't imagine what happens in a public school now can't imagine. But that's the spirit of Antichrist that says what? We're going to change things. I'm going to change the way, I'm going to change the structure. We're going to change the plan. We're going to change the leadership. Here's another thing I've been seeing quite a bit in my television shows. The lack of respect for authority. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. An employee talking to a boss. A person talking to a police officer. You know what that is? That's the spirit of Antichrist that wants to change the time, that wants to change the laws. Mm -hmm. 2 Timothy 3. It talks about having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. And then verse 6 says, For of this sort are they which creep into houses, and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. Now this verse has been one that it's always in the back of my mind, you know. The, the, it's a picture of the spirit of Antichrist at work. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. What is that? Don't marry, don't eat certain foods. Have certain have certain practices in your life, do certain things, but these people who have a form of godliness, then they sneak into somebody's house. Now this says silly women. Ladies, don't be offended by that because men are going to be held captive to it too. And I'll tell you what, men will be captivated by it because there will be a beautiful woman that comes into their house. Mm -hmm. And they're led astray. All under the guise of a form of godliness. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it right. But the right method is going to be a method that is against or instead of God's plan. And church, that's where we are living at today. Yeah. That's what we are living in today. When John said, many, and there's many antichrists that's already in the world, Tonight, I know, I, I, I hope tonight I was able to give some concrete evidence of the Antichrist that are working in this world. Mm -hmm. And I hope you see tonight the Antichrist that's working against the family model, the Antichrist that's working against the marriage model. There's an Antichrist that's working against our finances. You all, I, I'm 54. You all that say 20 years older than me. Could you ever imagine when you was growing up that people would carry ten, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars worth of debt? Not a house payment, just credit card payments. 
Just crying. Could you guys ever imagine that? No. No, your parents didn't teach you guys that, did, it? did they? No, your parents didn't teach you guys that. How in the world did we get to where we are today? I heard a clip, I heard a clip this week of one of Dave Ramsey's shows. And a couple called in. They had they had nine hundred thousand dollars worth of debt. Nine hundred thousand, and only two hundred thousand dollars was their house. Seven hundred thousand dollars. Half of that was school loans, and everything else was credit cards and loans. They were twenty nine years old. And you know what that is, Don? Even still, I, and I don't want to—I don't want to just get like my my prayer and my thought has always has been as we've done this is I don't want you guys thinking I'm coming in and saying well everything's spirit of Antichrist, but the reality is, John—it is. John says there's a lot of it in the world. I want you guys to see how active the enemy is. And I want you to see, because it comes under this heading, Spirit of Antichrist, it is de deceptive, meaning seductive, with the intention of going against or instead of replacing God. God has been replaced in our schools. God has been replaced in the home. In some churches, God is being replaced. At least the God of the Bible. At least the God of the Bible. That's exactly right. And that's and and thank you for that clarification because that's exactly what the Antichrist wants. You put whatever you want there and call it God. That's fine. Because he's not against all gods, he's against the Father and the Son. And I will say this because I do make a distinction in my life between the Father and the Son. He is more against the Son than he is the Father, and I say it for this reason. If you want to acknowledge the Father but deny the Son, Jesus teaches us that's still denying the Father. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of Antichrist right. says that's still okay. Mm -hmm. You guys follow what I'm saying? Jesus says that's still denying the Father. If you deny me, you're denying the Father. But the Antichrist says, call it God even if it's the God of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Because you guys, you guys might not realize this, but like God mentioned, Islam is the fastest growing religion. They believe in Jesus. They also believe in the God of the Bible. Mm -hmm. But they don't believe in Jesus. Is they don't believe in the deity of Jesus. They don't believe that Jesus is the way for salvation. They, you guys see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's a spirit of Antichrist that has now been a, it's a formal religion. Church, we, we live, when we're saying in the last days, we are right in an era of time right now. Where the spirit of Antichrist is just going crazy in our society. And again, he ain't trying to deceive you. How many of you have grandkids or great grandkids that's less than 15 years old? Boy, look at that. That's who he's after. That's who he's after. I saw a commercial on TV just recently about joining a satanic club. Mm -hmm. After school activities. It wasn't too far from here. No, it was in Memphis. Yeah, yeah. there was Every another time. one outside of Memphis. It wasn't in Memphis, the one I saw, but it, mm -hmm. yeah, like an hour, hour, less than an hour from here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. After school activities, mm -hmm. satanic club. Right, right. Yeah. My mom taught me a long time ago. I shouldn't say she taught me. It was just because it wasn't like, hey, sit down and learn this lesson. It was just the expression. You know, as I was in grade school in the 70s. And so I, I'm that first generation where you're taking prayer out of school. Mm -hmm. That's me. Because I was at 72, something like 71, 72. Mm -hmm. So I'm that first generation taking prayer out of school. And the church always says, get, 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 the, get God back in school. Get God back in school. And my mom, believe it or not, my mom is one that says no. Mm -hmm. And here's why. Because of what just what you said. Number one. When you let, when, I don't want you, it's my, as a parent, she says, it's my responsibility to teach you about Jesus. I don't want somebody that I don't know that they even know Jesus teaching you about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Secondly, 
When you open the school to God, you open the school to everything the world calls God. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what you see. That's why the schools have satanic clubs. Yep. Because you can't have one in, not the other. Mm -hmm. But you know what that is. That's what we're talking about tonight. That's the spirit of Antichrist that's at work in this world mm -hmm. saying, let's change things. Mm -hmm. Let's change things. Let's change things. Let's make it for the better. We're not going to change just for the change. Let's make it better. Brendan. Another thing that comes to my heart is the Bible tells you to spoil the child. You hate, I mean, you spoil the right to hate your child. Yes. But nowadays, if a parent disciplines their child, they get DCS all Yep. That's another spirit. It, there is. And again, you know, again, when we when I talk about the spirit of Antichrist, there's a spirit of Antichrist, but there are many spirits, powers, structures, whatever you want, that falls under that heading. Mm -hmm. And so the example that Brenda Brenda made, okay, we're not going to just go through well, that's the spirit of Antichrist. But what we can say is this the decision that comes around that uses a tremendous amount of reasoning. We do understand the logic that's used, and to a point there is correction, but we also understand what the Bible says. We know that is correct. Mm -hmm. So that's really what we should be following, and yet what happened? Somebody came in and changed something and said, now listen to the words, let's do this instead. Well, what is instead? Anti. Anti. So instead of God's way, Let's do it this way. So church, we really need.